Hey everyone, today I'm going to be covering a pretty cool version of Dash, and this version of Dash is going to be known as the hybrid build, a list that can flex in between an aggressive boost strategy, but also has the ability to transition into the more traditional pistol engine version of the deck. I've already covered a lot of Dash content in terms of deck strategy and hand evaluation, so I'm going to list all my resources below that are already on the channel, and this video will be a little bit more short. So of course, starting with the Mechanologist Hero Dash, we get to start with an item with two or less cost. So to just jump straight in the core of the deck, this is what your deck list looks like. 61, once you start with your item on the field, which is going to be Tecla Pounder. And this is just a really simple aggro list. There's probably nothing really too out of the norm here. We just have the main core of like almost every dash build, which is the rainbow suite of zero to 60, zipper hit and throttle. Just really good vanilla above rate cards with go again. In our blue slots, just to supplement the cost curve of the deck, we have blue T-bone as well as magnetic shockwave, which can sometimes break equipment, but isn't really used to rely on that, but they are blue block threes that can be played on their own. And then we also have both blue and red high speed impact, which can really help the boost strategy especially red high speed impact and then a really cool card that we get to run on the list is actually combustible courier both in blue and red red combustible courier along with goliath gauntlet can actually be an eight attack which threatens an extra three which is really hard for your opponent to block out especially if you're playing this into a more aggressive aggro race and even with tecla pounder blue combustible courier gets up to a four attack which is still on a break point for your opponent even blocking with a traditional three block so these cards actually can really help the core of the strategy which is going to be aggroing down your opponent as fast as possible we also run two overblast here it's just really solid bane finishers at the very end the only card i can maybe see some flexing between is the amount of techlo cores to high octanes high octane is mainly here just to still reach these 20 damage turns but being used with just techlo plasma pistol so maybe you could argue cutting back one high octane for another techlo core, just because maybe having the resources in this deck is really important to have these super long combat chains. Especially with Spark of Genius being able to basically get a techlo core for free as well as get even Arsenal target from the draw effect off of it. But here's the catch to this deck. So this is the core. But in the sideboard, you have a 12 card pistol package, which is the traditional two induction chamber, two plasma purifier. And then we're running eight D reacts. Now, if we had an extra slot, we would just run an extra unmovable, but this is pretty much the standard of what most of the pistol ridden mid-range lists look like. The only exception being running Toma Fiendal. But this is pretty much it. So it's a really cool, very tight deck list. You don't have any flexibility for specific hate cards like Signal Jammer or Dissolution Sphere. Our equipment slots are really tight as well, just using the Plasma Pistol, as well as Accelerators, kind of Providence, which is now replacing Skullcap, Goliath Gauntlet, and Tecla Foundry Heart. And you'll just be flexing in no Rune Gloves for Wizard, as well as possibly for some Rune Blades if you think that you want to be shutting off Beldon Creepers, for instance. It's a very easy way to pay for Rosetta. That's pretty much it. That's mainly what you're going to be doing. So. If you need to sideboard in the pistol package, you'll just be sideboarding in 12 cards. You're not really going to be flexing around a few of these. You're not really going to be only bringing in three sink belows or two unmovables. It's very straightforward. It's an all or nothing kind of deck, which makes it very easy to sideboard. You're either running the core 62 or you're running 60 cards with the pistol package. So if you're sideboarding out the aggro package, this is what you take out. Pounders and Tecla Core obviously come out for the pistol items as those are the replacements for them. And then cards like Overblast, Red High Speed Impact and Red Combustible Courier are not good to decks that are blocking a lot and they're mainly there to facilitate your aggressive strategy. So if you're on a more defensive one, all these cards are replaced with the D-Reacts and then the Payloads could honestly be left in the deck, but if you really want to run the tight 60 so you get the pistol items as quickly as possible and you get that blue pitch stack as quickly as you can, then it's probably best if you just cut the cards. But depending on the matchup, you may still want the Payloads, but that's just something best left out. So that's the main strategy of the deck. And matchups where you want to be aggressive you'll be running these 14 cards in the main deck and in decks where you want to be defensive you'll be running the 12 cards from the pistol package of the deck so that's mainly it there's not really anything too complex here now in terms of what your game strategy looks like in between games or what it looks like when you're actually playing it's fairly simple. The boost version of the deck is just going to be boosting as often as you can, making sure all your attacks have go again. And a lot of these are going to be above rate. So zero to 60, for instance, here is a zero for four with go again. That also blocks for three, which is really strong. And then you just have a wide range of aggro tools 
And all these are getting plus two from Decla Pounder, which is normally pretty relevant, especially on a lot of the on hits like Combustible Courier or High Speed Impact. You just have a lot of really aggressive cards and you're just trying to hit your opponent as hard and as fast as possible. It's not a very complex deck. The only thing that gets complex are learning individual lines, which once again, I have resources to better understand that. And I'll be making more content in the future to cover individual hands. When you don't want to be aggressive, there's a very easy pivot in this deck where it just tucked away in your sideboard. There's an entire engine value version of the deck that's just waiting to be played into matchups where you have the time and the life total to build out the pistol engine. The pistol engine is way stronger than the boost version. The problem is into a lot of matchups you can't live long enough to fully set it up. So what decks do you run the pistols into? It's very easy. It's only three heroes. So that's that's it. Uh, you run that core 62 I showed and at pretty much every other matchup, uh, if we discover that one of these is better with the pistol, you can add it on here. But as of right now, time of this recording, these are the three heroes you're gonna bring it in for. The reason why is because the Guardians are very slow. They only have a couple strong attacks in the deck. They normally have signature attacks that do a lot of damage and normally disrupt your hand, but with D-Reacts, you can get around the Dominate effects, and then they can't actually aggro you fast enough and you outvalue them with the Pistol Engine. So for Oldham, it's Oakenold, and for Bravo, it's Crippling Crush. Both these cards can be shut down with unmovable and a piece of armor. And then once you incorporate all the other D-Reacts, it's just a no-brainer and they can't aggro you fast enough, you get to set up the engine and you just completely lock them out. You outclass them every single turn afterwards once you have the full engine going and they just die a slow painful death. It'll be harder to kill Ulum because of Rampart, uh, blocking the pistol pretty efficiently, but you still win that matchup, it'll just take longer. And then into Dorinthia, you have to remember that Reprise does not trigger if you block with a card from Arsenal. So for instance, D-Reactions. If you can block out enough and shut off Dawnblade and also use D-Reacts to shut off her prize, Dorinthia can't actually ever get counters on Dawnblade and she also can't make the Dawnblade even swing twice in a turn. You have really good defensive capabilities and because of that, you play defensive during the early game and then once you set up the pistol engine, you get to basically say no blocks to Dorinthia, still continue to shut off her prize and then just outvalue her as the game comes to a close. So that's the deck, basically. I didn't feel the need to go any more in depth. It's very simple. Just an aggro core strategy that has the ability to pivot into a pistol version in the sideboard. The main reason for this is because the aggro version seems like the best way to get close to a 50-50 matchup into a lot of the field. But if you purely on the boost plan, you're going to struggle a lot into the Guardians, which are going to become very popular, especially with Prism leaving the meta and the Guardians coming in to tech against the aggro decks like Phi, Viscerai, and Briar. So that's just a quick deck tech for you to check out. Give it a go. Let me know how it works out for you. Thanks for watching.